This is the story of a girl and a boy. Or a girl and a girl. <laughs> or a boy and a boy. Or a boy and multiple girls. Or vice versa. Point being, this is the story of what happens when somebody meets the one. But what is love anyways? And why does it make it so thrilling to see that one person smile? And so great to be alive. And so hard to say goodbye. Is love really in the heart and soul? Or is it literally all in our heads? One website claims that with an irresistible cocktail of chemicals, our brain entices us to fall in love. Another says that science suggests we're neurologically wired to look for romance, but how to tell if it will last is another question. Professor Helen Fisher, a well-known love researcher and anthropologist at Rutgers University, concluded from her studies that there are three stages to romantic love, lust, attraction, and attachment. By using functional magnetic resonance imaging, or fMRI, she discovered that the main causes for these stages appear to be neurotransmitters and hormones. Stage 1. Lust Lust is the craving for sexual gratification. It is driven by the sex hormones testosterone and estrogen in men and women respectively. Stage 2. Attraction this is the stage that most would call romantic or passionate love. It is characterized by euphoria, mood swings, focused attention, obsessive thinking, and intense cravings. This is when you are so love-struck that you can only think of, well, not much else. Scientists think that three main neurotransmitters are involved in this stage. Adrenaline, dopamine, and serotonin. Falling for someone initially activates your stress response, causing the adrenal medulla to increase the amount of adrenaline and cortisol being secreted into the bloodstream. These neurotransmitters are responsible for sweat, a racing heartbeat, and dry mouth. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter made from the amino acid tyrosine. It is synthesized in the terminal buttons of neurons. The ventral tegmental area of the brain, or VTA, contains a lot of dopamine-making cells. Professor Helen Fisher says that couples often show the signs of surging dopamine, increased energy, less need for sleep or food, and exquisite delight in smallest detail. And finally, serotonin. Researchers at University College London discovered that people in love have lower levels of serotonin. These lower serotonin levels are the same as those found in people with obsessive-compulsive disorders, possibly explaining why those in love obsess about their partner. Stage 3. Attachment Attachment is the sense of calm, peace, and stability one feels with a long-term partner. It is the bond that keeps couples together long enough for them to have and raise children. Scientists think there might be two major hormones involved in this feeling of attachment, oxytocin and vasopressin. Oxytocin is produced naturally in the hypothalamus in the brain. It is often called the cuddle hormone because it heightens that warm and fuzzy bonding feeling, increasing sexual receptiveness and intimacy. Vasopressin, or antidiuretic hormone, is called the monogamy chemical secreted from the posterior pituitary. Only about 3% of mammals are monogamous. Unfortunately, humans are not one of these naturally monogamous animals. In the few species that are, vasopressin helps to create a lifelong bond between two mates. In the end, this is still the story of what happens when somebody meets the one. Love holds many complexities that science to this day has not fully explained. So, is it all in your head? Well, I personally like to believe not.